Have you no. seen those TikToks? I think it's TikTok. Where it was like, it was going around asking straight guys, actually just non-vagina holders in general, mm -hmm. how many tampons a girl goes through during her period. And as two non-vagina holders, I would love to get thoughts. Devin, God. let's talk about this. Let's go home. MeUndies believes that when you feel comfortable, you can do anything. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash wild. That's MeUndies.com slash wild. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. Hello. Lauren, welcome back. Thank you so much. It's I, been so long. I feel like I haven't actually, potted in forever. Actually, everybody else, I, Lauren, welcome back to Wild Till 9. Thank you so much for having me here on Wild Till 9. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm so excited you had to come, like, come by the studio. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry, I Justine, our, my, my co-host uh -huh. could not be here for today. Uh, co-host Remy or co-host I Justine? Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I can't wait for the swag bag. I can't wait to see what you've put together for me. Oh. Yeah, the guest swag bag. Got it. Speaking of guest swag bags, mm. um, would you like to tell the audience that you've already now in November, before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. received mm -hmm. your favorite Christmas gift by far? My favorite Christmas gift by far? I'll give you a hint. It was a swag bag in another performance that you did this year. It was, oh my God. I'm, I'm shocked. It oh took, my God. It took I, that I, Go ahead. I, Cannot believe we're talking about this. Oh my God. I can't believe I like, this wasn't top of mind to tell the pod. I, when I, when you said, what do you want to start with? Yeah. I already knew that you I had- forgot. It. Yeah. I forgot. Nah, you didn't I forget. forget. You missed, you, you, you placed this memory somewhere else. So to give a little context, we spent the last week. So I flew to New York for a few days um, to film with Elmo. Not a big deal. We'll circle back on that in a minute. And then Jeremy met me in Toronto for a few days and I did a little speaking thing at YouTube and we were there, saw some Toronto things, whatever. We'll circle back on all of this. Um, but at the YouTube speaking event, there was like a really cute little swag bag that I put together um, after the event. Or I got a ring sizer. <laughs> She got a ring size it. No, but the best part is that it was this hand stamped, really, really cute gold necklace that has Moose and Diggy's first initials on it, which is adorable. And so my mom and Jeremy were going through my swag bag as family and loved ones do. As creeps do. Cause we wanted to see if there's anything we could take first. Right, like snacks, right. Yeah. Like sweaters, whatever it might be. So Money, they were in the green room bonds, or whatever. Gold. Looking at all my stuff and there's, a ring sizer, just like rogue in the jewelry, in like the jewelry gift, which doesn't make any sense. It'd be like one thing if they were like, oh, like here's a kit to like send away for a custom ring with initials. But it was a gold necklace that was very much finished mm -hmm. and a totally separate- Separate bag, separate packaging by itself, not attached sizer. to anything else. And ring so sizer. I need to know if I, I'll pop it up on screen. I forget the, uh, the name of the jewelry brand. If she listens to the pod and like, She's 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 got to be in on that or whoever purchased. There's just no way that that randomly happens. There's no way. The funniest bit about this is that as Lauren's mom and I were you know going through and scouring through to take whatever good as we wanted for ourselves. That's also just like such a funny like visual to me like 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 watching you guys yes scrounge through. Yeah, we were scrounging uh, <laughs> as we were scrounging through. We 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 came upon we discovered the ring sizer. The ring sizer and yeah. both of us were like, what are we this for? Move it to the side. I, like, we were both like I, as perplexed I as we were. Just like I can't believe I can't. And so, even more context to this whole thing is that um, th there's so much to catch up on. Oh my god, our parents are also meeting on Christmas. So, and again, we are going to circle back to that. But a friend who I had told, um, I was like, oh, our parents are meeting for Christmas. We're going to be all together on Christmas Day. And my friend was like, oh my god, do you think you're getting engaged on Christmas Day? And I was like, absolutely the fuck not. I would literally bet all of the money in my bank account and both of our dogs on that not but happening. If someone in Vegas will take that bet, you should do it. <gasps> Babe, you're what? telling people to take our dogs? N no, no, I'm, I'm saying my bank account. We'll keep, we will keep that bet. You oh. will win that bet. Right. Oh. Spoiler alert, you're not get, being asked yeah. any questions. Totally, totally. Of substance besides, can you ask your mom to stop talking about politics while right. my mother's also talking about politics? Yes, and religion, can't wait. Yes. Um, 
And so she was like, she was like, oh my God, like, do you think you're getting engaged on Christmas day? And I was like, absolutely the fuck not. I was like, no. And I was like, he doesn't even know my ring size. Like, like we're so like, no, he doesn't even know my ring size. And she was like, oh my God, I have a ring size or do you want me to bring it? Because we were about to see her in Toronto a few days later. And I was like, that's fuck. We said, we had a little giggle. We had a little, a little, you know, a little, uh, 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 yeah, a little he 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 moment over it. And obviously she did not bring the ring sizer to dinner, which would have been hilarious, but she didn't. And then not but 24 hours later, does a little plastic ring sizer show up amidst the YouTube speaking event goodie bag? We don't know that it wasn't a cock ring sizer. It could have been that to measure the circumference of a penis. Um, now we have that tool. I don't, not to say that there isn't a dick out there that would not fit, that would that would fit in the ring sizer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But maybe flaccid. You could probably, you might be able to stuff it through. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Wow, this is the biggest compliment I've ever got. No, no, I just, <laughs> Let's keep this I'm going. I'm gonna be completely honest. When I, the first time I like touched a flaccid dick, I was like, oh, this is squishier than I thought it was gonna be. Squishier, really? It's more squishy and more malleable. Malleable? Yeah, malleable, Did I you guess? think they were just always just at attention? No, I just thought that it would be not as bendy. Ooh. And then came her love for Squishmallows. And then- right. <laughs> Who came oh first? Um, uh, I actually, I really am trying to remember what the first thought of like that crossed my mind uh-huh. mid, ooh, vagina. Um, I think it was just like- Were you ever shocked by how much of it was just like kind of like on the inside, like not quite visible? Like even a straight dude, I'm like, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean? Like, like we always say that like, you just like have a thing. Like you got like another uh, phalange, that's not the right word. Hmm. Another, another- Member? Uh, no, appendage? no, appendage, that's sort of looking for. You have just like a, an appendage hanging off of you. And like with girls, it's like, I've got two arms, two legs, and like, that's kind of it. Um, Listen, I think every guy in the world has compared it to a leg at some point, but I mean, right. to be real, you don't really think about it because it's on you. Totally. I think the vagina is still the world's uh, eighth mystery War, or world one of the wondering. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, how it works and all the things that are, you know, capable a part of, of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, capable of uh, how one flies it, drives it. Have you seen those TikToks? I think a TikTok where it was like it was going around asking straight guys, actually just non-vagina holders in general, mm-hmm. how many tampons a girl goes through during her period. And as two non-vagina holders, I would love to get thoughts. Devin, oh God, let's talk about this. Oh God. So how um, many tampons no, we, we know the question. We know throughout the a period cycle? Throughout a period cycle, which yeah. is a, about a week. Look, is that a take. question or a statement? No, 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 it's about a week. I'm going to make it a question. Is it about a week? It's about, yeah, <laughs> I, I think we can go from five it's, days. It's, it's all different. Yeah. yeah I would okay. say like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So like, I would say five to eight days, maybe depending. I mean, it's different for every girl, but right. Yeah. Okay. And we're talking the average here. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Devin, just real quick. What's your first thought? My first thought is I'm assuming at least going to the bathroom two times a day would need to change it out each time. So Do you only pee two times a day. Okay, fine. Let's say. Let's talk about three. your water intake. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, let's say, what do you think? Twenty to thirty per tampon per, per cycle. Per cycle. <laughs> per tam- per cycle. Uh, that seems high. Let's keep in mind I'm the gay one of the group. Okay, no, no, I, I I'm the farthest from understanding actually, the vagina. I, I actually are, argue that you should actually know more about Shit. this than Jeremy because I think about all the gay guys that I've been like in a bathroom and with. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they. Yep. I'm thinking two a day. I'm a bad gay. I'm thinking two a day. And that's what I'm thinking. And then, yeah. Okay, so your 20 math doesn't quite. Yeah, that would, that would leave us <laughs> like 10. I think it's two a day. Well, hmm, you know what it is. I think there's probably two to three a day on the front half of the cycle, going down mm. to one to two a day mm. on the latter half. Okay, because it slows mm. down. Yeah, so that would put us at, okay, so let's say there's three three days in the front half. Yeah. We'll say 2.5 each on those three, <laughs> right? So okay. that's 7.5, <laughs> okay? And then the last, uh, three to four days, maybe like one, one to two, right? So we're gonna go with 12. <laughs> uh, my head was first at 14, but then I, I got scared because I was like, but what if they have to go to the bathroom more? And that's where the 20, 30 came. Yeah. I, I'm with Jeremy on the 12. 12. I, I rescind my original That's answer. definitely low. So you're supposed to oh, change shit. it no matter what is happening like in the world or in your life every six to eight hours. Um, because bitches be getting toxic shock syndrome if you keep your tampon in too long. Okay, I understand that's low, what? but at the same time, mm-hmm. we're supposed to clean our ice maker every week. So like, let's be clear. This is one of those things that you made me just don't fuck around with. Not and to the say lint, that- the lint in the dryer, you know, you're supposed to shoulda, coulda, woulda. 
an absolute expert nope, at the lint I'm gonna, dry I'm gonna stop here. you right there. The lint should be cleaned every time you do laundry. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Every time because so, fires. I mean, again, it depends on if, if a bitch got a heavy flow, but you're right. Like usually the number of tampons per day at the beginning on the on the front half of the period is much more than on the back half of the period. You're Jeremy absolutely Jeremy fucking the OBGYN, look at me. But you should be doing like four, even, even if like, if you have a light period, you should be doing like four a day based on like the hours, I mean, three to four to it, three to four a day on the later I mean, days. Six to eight, it, okay, six hours, fine, but that would be on the hour perfect, like perfectly. I mean, I would say, I would say like, I have a really late period. So like I've gone definitely like 10, 12 hours before because like my period is so late, but also like sometimes girls have such heavy periods that like they could change it every 30 minutes. I, I believe that's what I'm thinking. I think it's a, a, a dynamic, it is, it is Number. quite the range. Okay. So, what if you're in an event and you can't access, you're just like busy or you're working on your feet? Bitch. What about nurses? Bitch, this is the, this is the, there is not an answer for this question. And that is one of the many struggles of being a woman. Like Ugh. smoke breaks are legally like required in certain states or tampon breaks. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's see. So let's, let's go with the, with the average girl. So the first four days, let's say we're doing every four, Five hours, maybe. Mm, okay. Okay, so but twenty-four. On, but okay, but that's five. only when you're awake. You're probably not waking up every five hours, four or five hours. When you're right, but if, you, if you've got like a heavy first few days, you might change it. You know what I mean? I think. I think. So we're talking five to six the first couple of days. I think we're talking five to six. Depends. Depends. Maybe four to six. So you got to keep like a couple hundred tampons on you if you have like a daughter or two. Oh yeah. Got it. They like usually the one that I buy is like a forty-eight pack. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so the first four days, we're gonna say um, every, we'll say every five hours okay. we do a change. Yeah. Um, okay, so 24 divided by five hours, that's 4.8. So we'll say for the first four days, the front- Minimum four. Let's go three days. First three days. First three days. Minimum four. Okay, so 12 that's right giving there. us at 14.4 for the first three days, wow. remember okay. that number. And then let's say for the last three days, we're doing every eight hours, which is only three times three. So that lands us at 23.4 tampons. So how much does each period cost then? Cause what's a, what's a, what's a 48 rack of, of, of ponds <laughs> cost you? A 48 rack of the ponds? That's what I said. <laughs> Honestly, I actually don't know. This is, I mean, so there's like something called the pink tax where it's like there's taxes on stuff. Don't what? woman explain the pink tax to me. You know I am an tax? ally. Okay. okay, okay, you explain the pink tax I don't know the pink tax. The pink tax is essentially the things that women have to buy, they gotta buy them. They gotta fucking buy them. Otherwise they're in literal blood, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a, a premium on those things that they don't really even need to cost anywhere near as much as they are. Mm -hmm. But because mm -hmm. one, they're being targeted at women, but two, they need <laughs> to buy them. <laughs> They are being sold at a much higher dollar yeah. amount than they would if the same oh. product was necessary for a man. Wow. Right. And okay, also too, we didn't even throw into the equation that there are super tampons. Super tampons, we got pads, we got we got, we yeah. got all sorts of things. Right. Anyway, okay, Kotex, so a tampons, Tampex, uh <laughs> uh, uh uh fuck. What's Play, another Playtex? Play, that's what I said, Playtex. Yeah. Okay, so um Playtex Sport, which is the ones that I personally like, okay. um, for 48 is about $12. Shout out Playtex. Yeah, so- $12, so we're talking about six bucks. A, a, but that's like, that's like also, you gotta think about the- all Storage of like costs. The extra, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. The, I mean, the priority here in every period is like the, uh, the violent cravings for bad food. Or not even bad food, specific food, comfort food. Also, you got to think about um, like the the need for soft things, mm -hmm. hot water bottles. Mm -hmm. You got to think about. Also, we didn't even get into like the pads and the penny liners that like also have to be part of the whole equation a lot of the times. How many pairs of underwear get ruined that you have to then go buy again? Oh, at, usually at least one. Yeah. 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 I, I'm really lucky that my. I, also, we. This was not on the agenda for today's episode. I, I literally, in my notes, had <laughs> said, "Let's talk about periods." That was my. Those were my notes. So, if everyone just wants, wants to like just take a moment in the comments and let us know about on average how many tampons you use throughout your period, that would be highly educational. I think for uh, Devin and Jeremy. No, no, no. Yes, <laughs> I don't know. There's an ad on this. Yes, I want you to answer that question. But if you happen to be in a relationship with someone who does not mm. have a period. <gasps> I want you to ask them yes. the question yes. that we were asked first. Yes. Yes. Give that answer. And then below it, I want to know the accurate number. Wow. 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 Why don't we have 
more pink tax related sponsors. There just shouldn't even be a pink tax. We shouldn't even get into this. That's what I'm saying. We should work with brands <sighs> who are doing a great job of eliminating the pink tax. It's a government thing. Direct to consumer. Huh? If they went direct to consumer? It's a, it's a government tax thing. Walk me through that. It's just like a, it's just, it's like tax. Right, walk me through that. I don't, I don't know, tax. So there's a literal like line item of tax? Will you Google pink tax, Devin? Okay, will you give that a read, babe? Well, yeah, well, the, the pink tax refers to the tendency for products marketed specifically towards women to be more expensive than those marketed towards men. This phenomenon is often attributed to gender-based price discrimination whose name stems from the, from the observation that many of the affected products are pink. That's what I said. So there's not a oh, literal tax. Oh, wait, I, I thought that people were trying to remove like the percentage of tax that goes onto those items. Well, now I would be- Which in, I'm, kinda, I'm kind of in favor for too. I would be in favor of supporting the elimination of sales tax in general mm. on the items that are in this category. That's what I thought pink tax, pink tax was. Eliminating the tax? Yeah. You, you, you wanna eliminate the elimination of the tax? No, I wanna not have tax on the pink things. Right, but that's just sales good tax. Yeah, that's right. That's just sales tax. That's what I want it off. That's what I thought the pink tax was. Got it. Yeah. So I would, I think that there's a great reason for those items to not be taxed at all. Agreed. Mm. But they don't, there's not like an extra tax on them. The pink tax is like representative I of the, the market. Yeah, yeah, of, of the like the Did increase. I know what the pink tax was more than you? Well, I thought the pink tax was just- Where the fuck is my ally tattoo? Let me mm -hmm. just put it right here. Feminist. So I thought the pink tax like campaign Feminist. movement was just remove the sales tax off of like feminine hygiene products, et cetera. Right. That sounds right. You're a little, it's a little literal. That's I what I thought it. it was. Yeah. So our parents are meeting for Christmas. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. And it's gonna be wait, fine. Wait, did we get an answer? What's the number? What's the number of what? 20? Yeah, what did I just say? I forgot. Nine plus 23? 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nine plus 14. So you're closer. Your first, yeah. your first, yeah. Shocker. Yeah. Wow. See? Gay men, well, periods. The gays no, know. thanks. The gays always know. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, thank you for representing <laughs> all of the gays. I'm trying. <laughs> So um, we've got overlap happening this Christmas. Uh, intentional overlap. Intentional overlap and- A Moment of silence for the reason that this is possible. We have to say it, Jeremy, we'd be remiss. Jeremy's sister died. Okay, it's maybe a little more context for that. Jeremy's mom's dog died, which on the family tree would mean Jeremy's sister. Oh. Yes. Burkles. Uh, yeah, kidney, liver. 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 Liver issues, yeah. Yeah. Which is very sad. She was only six. It was super unexpected, acting totally normal the night before. Yeah. And poor Burkles has like always had, she's always just been like picky. So she's yeah. never been a big eater. And so I feel like her not eating, like if Moose and Diggy didn't eat dinner the night before, like we take them to the ER. Yeah, but like, Diggy. Yeah. Diggy, yeah, maybe not. But like Moose, like if Moose didn't want to eat, like there'd be something it's seriously over. wrong. It's over. But Burkles, Burkles passed away peacefully during the night mm -hmm. because the day before she was totally fine. Yep. And, and although that is very sad, and it is very sad, this does now present the opportunity for our parentals to meet. It does. Not I don't sure know. I don't again. know what the fuck those fingers are. Yeah, that's a little questionable. I don't know if yeah. I quite associate that. It's just that. everyone just forget yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, purge that. Omit that from but your brain. But our parents are meeting. Are we so, nervous? No. It's gonna be fine. Lauren is. It's gonna be fine. Lauren's. I mean, Lauren is. You know what I'm actually the most nervous for? What? Is that like when I'm around my parents, like I can swear and say crude whatever I, I and be well. totally, yeah, normal. Uh -huh. But like when I'm around your mom, I keep it pretty clean. Yeah, you're pretty much a fucking delight. I, yeah, I'm a fucking delight. Also blanket, bandana, and potentially sweater in the works coming January, 2023. Um, but I just like, I'm gonna have to find my own balance here of not having a, also your mom is coming for like six minutes. Yeah, all I have to do is not say fuck, 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 shit, 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 bitch, fuck, fuck, shit, bitch. Uh, do you like think, you do you think do. shit could fly? I would never say the F word around your mom. You can say whatever the fuck you want. You are a near 30 year old woman dating her 30 year old son. I can't break the illusion of being a delight. Well, then you better be a fucking delight. I am a delight. You are. But do you think it could be a delight that says shit? Yeah. I think that's a good, you know what? Test the I think waters that's a, yeah, 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 yeah. I was really testing um, last I, visit with Jesus Christ. That's not one to test with. Oh. That's, so I'm actually doing better if I eliminate Jesus Christ and say shit? Yeah, she's never gonna be thrilled about that one. Mm. Blasphemy would mm. be on the, about the bottom of the list. So would it be shit, fuck, and then Jesus Christ? Um, Where would fucking Jesus would Christ go? Damn, shit, bitch, playfully. Oh. Uh, 
Jesus Christ. Mm. Fuck. Okay. Did Don even know the C word? The C word doesn't exist. Right? Yeah, I don't think Don even knows. Besides the C word. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Christ. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, if you want to keep the British humor to a minimum, that's probably right. Good. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's probably your best go. And I just want to give myself a pat on the back because I, we were like kind of struggling on what to do for gifts because one, no one really needs anything. And also two, like everyone is traveling Ooh, here. I know which one's worse than fuck. Pro-choice, keep going. <gasps> oh, oh. <sighs> Choking on my own air. Yep. Oh my God. Okay. I'll let you guys cross <gasps> that one. To be clear, you that was what? not my, that was not my choice of um, list that was somebody else's choice. Keep going. I think Donna though actually is pro-choice. Yeah, she is. Yeah, I was gonna say she is pro-choice. She would just because- prefer the world not have, not no, no, be pregnant. But you know what? She's the perfect example of what pro-choice should mean. And that like she chooses for herself what uh, she wants to do. Well, cause she adopted me. Totally, totally. Right. And like, she would be like, Lauren, you choose what you want to do. That is yeah. oh, literally yeah. what pro-choice is. Like depending on what your religious values are, like. That's what it should be. You are correct. Um, Thank you for defending my mother for me. Yeah, no, she is a hundred percent. I also don't want people to like come after Donna uh, for that when it's completely not true. We won't have Donna slander here. Literally is the, she she honestly is like, that's what I wish people who like really lean into religion and like being pro-life. Like Donna is the shining example of how you can be a decent human being. She would, she wishes people would choose life, but she does not force people to, have to make that decision yes. for them, no matter what the cause. Circumstances yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Donna is religious, political, and pro-choice. And getting to that, that age where I think she's just looking back to the good old days and going, ah, <laughs> when men were men. So he didn't take that. <laughs> and it was this guy who was, um, he brought uh, adoption applications on a little clipboard to uh, all oh, the rioters wait. outside of um, Planned Parenthood. Uh-huh. And he was going up to each of them being like, so how many kids have you adopted? And you know, normally they've uh, 10 out of 10 times, it's they've adopted zero of right, them. Right. And then he's like, okay, great. Well, here's the application um, for you to become a potential adoptive parent. And I'm so excited for you to, and that did not go over super Did well. anyone like sign up? No, Fuck I'm, no, I'm sure of not course they, not. They kept in the edit, but yeah. Of course not. <sighs> you know. This was this also was not on our agenda to talk about today. What, abortion? Yeah, pro-life, pro-choice. So we got- um, How many tampons, tampons in a cycle? We call them tampons. We call them here. tampons. I don't know where that came from. Not sure, because Lauren, when I'm brushing my teeth at night and Lauren is during her cycle and she forgot to take a tampon into tampon into the bathroom, <laughs> she screams at me, I can see it. Leaving me. And it, it, it screams, <laughs> and then it's leaving me a tampon. <laughs> and I go, Yes. And then and then he cracks open the door like half an inch and then So then I get up through the like the ventilation system and then, and then I go in and then I, I tie it on a string and then I, <laughs> I bring it down and then I run away. Like a, a mature adult does. <sighs> okay, so going back to our parents, um I want to give myself a pat on the back for coming up with the most wholesome and quaint little gift exchange. So again, like our parents are traveling in and like no one wants to pack like a ceramic mug to go back with them or like a set of heavy ass coasters or nope. something that Nope. You don't need, but I feel like there's a consistent pattern within your family and mine that like we don't do like the really aesthetic, like color specific themed Christmas trees. No, even though every time I go to somebody else's house and I see that and I go, God, that looks nice. It looks super nice. Yeah, no, and I love that. And we do- <laughs> But we're not gonna do it. Eclectic target mix and other gifted ornaments. I would actually be curious to see the level of uh, family mm-hmm. trust, comfort, open honesty, transparency of a Christmas tree filled with curated memories that mm-hmm. might look mm-hmm. like visual shit to you know the eye that doesn't care about those memories, right? Or a you know out of the magazine, out of the Sears catalog, right? Christmas tree, right? I I would I would dare to say <gasps> the eclectic version is happier, healthier, happier family. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um. Yeah, our tree looks like ass usually. Just wait for me um, to like just 
destroyed in the comments. <laughs> I spend a lot of time looking at the Pantones. No, no, no. And, and I love that for people who, who like look forward to that. They choose a new theme every year. Yeah, I mean, Sierra Killers um, need Christmas too. Yeah. yeah, but our family tree is like rainbow Christmas lights. We literally had an angel that would go on top of the tree. And then my dad, like massive bulb earrings would hang two Toronto Maple Leaf ornament balls off of both of this bitch's wings. And like, that's the aesthetic of our Christmas tree. Yeah. And then you can imagine the DIY ornaments that I have produced from the years 1993 until present. And so right. th we got a smattering of those Ooh, on the a, Christmas tree. Can we do a video on your channel where we make Christmas ornaments of the boys? Jeremy, I would love nothing <laughs> fucking more. <laughs> Got that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, oh, by the way, um, Donna actually texted me earlier. Where are we going to put the nativity scene? Oh, the nativity scene? Yeah. Hmm. How, ooh, what about an underwater nativity scene this year at the bottom of the pool? Jesus. Different. Forgive her. Anyway. Wait, that, that, that's fun. No. That's she just, said drown them. <laughs> this type of behavior will get your, your delight card revoked immediately. Hmm. Okay, so where does that fall in? Is that above the sea world? The sea world? Uh, well, it's literally below. It's below the okay. water. Okay. It's, it's drowning. Right. Yeah. Okay. When you walk down outside and go, it's there. Uh, mm. Mm. Not cute. She passes out into the well. pool. She said, <laughs> heavens. <sighs> uh, so uh, by the way, when are we putting our tree up? Uh, well, I, I'm supposed to wait for uh, December 1st for Vlogmas. Oh, got it. Great. Going back to my super quaint and wholesome idea. We're doing an ornament swap this year with the parental right. unit and Donna. Parental units. Units. Is Donna still, see calling Donna just a single unit makes me like envision her as like a super like. Got it. So you don't think that I have a parental unit because I only have one parent? I just feel like calling her a unit is like kind attacked. of like, no, that just, this if someone were to call me a unit, you. I would be like, oh my God, they, like, that's what they think of my body Better shape. Than a Christmas eunuch. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. You know, they're- uh, I wonder if I forgot to take my ADD medicine today. That's a perspective. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that is a perspective. But yeah, we're doing that. And so am I supposed to, are you, you're gonna handle that, right? Yeah, you're you're literally done Christmas shopping from our unit, our family unit. I love that. And that should actually be on like the fiance payroll. Hmm. And so I, I actually well, don't think Well, now I know that you're a nine that. and a half. So, hmm. you know, next year when it rolls around, we'll get you a, a hmm. you know, a, a small. I'd like just everyone to hold Jeremy accountable that I am in fact a five and a half. Five and a half, shoe size. Oh my God, I am a five and a half shoe size yep. and ring size. Mm. Wow. You know, I've gotten you many rings. I wonder if that, that's definitely, that definitely doesn't I've gotten you Cartier. Yeah. I've gotten you more Cartier. Yeah, but we also learned that the right hand or like your dominant hand is usually half a ring size bigger than your non-dominant hand. Yeah, it's like guys right forearms being a lot bigger than yeah. the left one. Yeah. Same, same concept too. Or the boob closer to the heart. I've always heard is bigger than the boob, not closer to the heart. Your left boob is bigger. My left boob is bigger, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. any other questions? Um, can we get a fact check on that? Is the boob that's closer to the heart bigger or like do all my friends just have bigger left boobs? I've had girlfriends with right boobs bigger than left. I don't understand. Um, uh, Why have you seen another pair of boobs? <laughs> oh, I didn't say I saw them. I just, oh. we wrote about it. Mm. We pen palled. Oh, there are a number of reasons why a woman's breast can change in size or volume, including trauma, puberty, and hormonal changes. Oh, but that's, oh, I guess, okay. That doesn't say the left Something boob is Something that could bigger. happen to either yeah. of them. Yeah. You don't move on from breasts. I have to go pee, be right back. Okay. What is the very first thing you put on every morning? If you answered my existential dread, then we have some friends who can help with that. Now, what's the second thing you put on every morning? Underwear? Correct. Miatis believes that when you feel comfortable, you can do anything. Yes, that includes having a positive outlook on your day while wearing fun and often ridiculous prints on your butt. If I don't have good prints on my butt, I'm gonna have a bad day. Like I, that's just fact. I get it. That is just fact. No, I get it. And I love MeUndies. Not only are they extremely comfy, but the patterns and designs are 10 out of 10 cute. I, I feel like this company was made for you. The holidays are right around the corner and I am a festive queen. I literally just finished my nail appointment of having holiday nails. So you know, I've been searching for some cute holiday undies to wear to match. I've even been trying, I've even been trying to get Jeremy to match with me, which we all know is an uphill battle, but with how comfy MeUndies are, I think I'm inching towards the finish line of success. I can see it. 
MeUndies makes the softest fabrics you've ever put on your body. You can sit on your couch all day or go out and live your comfiest life. Once you try their undies, socks, bralettes, and loungewear, you will never go back. Choose from a range of limited edition prints and colors and sizes from extra small to 4XL. You can also sign up for their free to join Me Undies membership, where you get a monthly subscription that sends styles right to your door. Plus, enjoy up to 30% off on virtually everything they make, free shipping and returns on every order. It's huge. Early access to new launches and exclusive members only sales. Me Undies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash wild. That's MeUndies.com slash wild. What's the very first thing you do when you wake up? Tell it, you that you love you. Tell you that you look that pretty. That you love you? Yeah. <laughs> That's so accurate. Weird. <laughs> Good morning to myself. I love myself. <laughs> Is it checking up on your credit score? That's second. That's second. That's second, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so didn't think so. Well, Chime is here to do that for you. Building your credit score is super overwhelming when you first start out. I just recently started building my American credit score. And so this is truly truly relatable. I remember how intimidating and confusing it can be, but credit is such an important part of building an independent life. Potentially one of the like most, most, most important. That no one tells you about, that no one tells you about. And I wish I had Chime back in the day to help me out. And that's why I want to tell y'all about how great Chime is. With their secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. That's, that's a huge piece, huge, huge, huge. Their members can see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. To start your credit journey with Chime, sign up only takes two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank and a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some users' scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except that MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or in any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. don't know where, what the sleeping arrangements are going to be for having such a big home, but also having three workspaces take over three bedrooms slash offices in this household. We don't really have a third sleeping space. The, the, so meaning if you could make sure to um, share this podcast with three of your friends so that we could buy a bigger place, that'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got some ideas. What are your ideas? So I think the most reasonable scenario yeah. is that we're going to take all the stuff for the most part at the on the walls out of here uh -huh. and set up something temporary in this room. For us? No, oh, Donna. Don, Don, you're gonna put Donna in here? What else are we gonna do? What? It only makes sense. Oh God. I guess, can you like rent a good mattress? Is that like a thing? We're not renting mattresses. No, but like, like, cause I don't want her to sleep on a fucking air mattress. Like absolutely not. No, I, I got some ideas. Okay. It's not that interesting for the pod. But if you do have some- um, <laughs> This is like actual life logistics of our down, life. Yeah. break up. Actually, you know what? I've got better ideas. Moving on. Okay. I do have a $100 mattress, green tea memory foam <laughs> on Amazon. Could be here by tomorrow. You will die. Yeah? Amazing. We'll oh my God. You and know but, what? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, and this is maybe a good time to talk to the old friends at Purple, see what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, we've checked <laughs> with Purple in a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is a great sagu into my foray into finding the, so as we've concluded in a past episode, my um, antidepressants slash anti-anxiety medications give me horrific night sweats, which is definitely the sexiest thing to ever come out of my mouth. But like, it is an actual issue that I face every single night. And it, it's- You know, Lauren, I would start to be concerned if when we started the cuddle, Yeah. I was the one that became the sweaty nightmare first. I think less than three times you've been the sweaty one. Yeah. Less than three times. And for being a six, four large, like kind of hairy man, like that is shocking. Okay, can we, uh, selectively hairy. So, selectively hairy. Yeah. Just kind, tastefully, kind, tastefully hairy. I, 
Honestly? No. <laughs> call Harry Jowsey because Harry Jowsey's new podcast should be called Tastefully Harry. Tastefully Harry? That yeah. is a good fucking pod name. Way, we, we, need, we need Harry back. There's so much. There's yeah, so there's, much yeah, there's so much to talk about. Um, yeah, so let's go back to you being a clammy mess. Um, so because, and then now even just talking about this and my phone listening and my TikTok listening and you know my FBI agent listening, I get served a new ad for a new product for like an anti net net night sweat product every single night. Honestly, there should be a segment on the podcast where you give <sighs> your most recent update on your trials and tribulations in terms of not being the Mississippi River when you wake up. It's it's like it's not okay. So it's not okay. What's your so, anyway, so my newest one is this, and you felt it. It's like this duvet, which is that is one of the softest blankets I've ever felt, and it somehow just like stays cool to the touch at all times. Did it work last night? Yeah. Well, I had a really shit sleep where I just like didn't sleep from two to 4 a.m. And so like, it, I feel like it wasn't like a true test run. Mm, yeah. Um, Cause I wasn't, you know what though? I will say I got a decent score on my aura ring sleep report last night okay. for talking to my animator in India for a lot of the night last night. Shout out India Tillies. Yeah, shout out India Tillies. Um, so yeah, so that's my that's my newest product. And okay. you know what the one that I think is gonna be next maybe is there's we, this- We haven't even gone through this one yet. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm just anticipating. So far, this is the best one, gonna be honest. Yeah, but every single- Because every, every fucking thing is like, like there's so many different fabrics and brands that are like, this will keep you cool all night. And like it wicks away sweat. And, Such as? And- which, which ones didn't work for you? You know what? I, I can't even think about the names because they're them. like- Drill them, Put them burn blast. them. <laughs> no, it's like, it's random things. It's like random products on Instagram algorithm that I like don't even know the name of. Um, but I feel like bamboo is something that you always hear. Like it's like the coolest sleeping softest Why fabric. is bamboo something that you can use for like 97 Literally, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, bamboo is not an effective anti-sweat. Uh, this is probably, this, this is, this is a really sexy topic. Let's move on. Let's move on. My new product. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a full review next week. Okay. Um, but so far, so good. Okay, great. And it's really soft and really cold, and it's kind of like a freak, a free product so far. Okay. So uh, our four year anniversary mm -hmm. was last week. Last week. And we celebrated it at the top of the CN Tower in Toronto. The CN Tower. Which, if anyone's interested in having a great view, would recommend. If anyone's interested in having a great meal. Wouldn't Would recommend. recommend. Uh, oh my God. My I'm not kidding. Up there. Like we were in Toronto for I think five nights. That was hands down the worst meal that we had the entire trip. Yeah. Hands down. It was, yeah. So the CN Tower for those that have not been there, which is 99% of the world, it's a very, very tall structure. Mm -hmm. It's a big fucking antenna. Super it's not tall. really a building. No. It's just, a, a, I guess, an, it's an like antenna. It's like a big ass elevator and then like yeah. a dome, like, yeah. a, like a thing in the middle yeah. or at the top. And so tourist central, mm -hmm. right? And so we had our, like, we didn't go there for the meal. We went there for the view, which is great. And so like, kind of like what, what I was I was thinking is like, okay, like what's like, what are like the touristy things that like might be worth doing? And I was like, like, I mean, the view is pretty great from the CN Tower because like the cityscape of Toronto is pretty great. There's lots of like high rise buildings or whatever. I was like, hey, like, should we go up during the day? Should we go up during the nighttime? But it's like still kind of expensive to get a ticket. But if you get dinner, you get to go to um, your own observation deck, which is, you know, within a couple Life of stories, hack. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. And it's definitely an overpriced meal and it definitely was not worth the price. Well, the experience was great. Experience was great. Except for I now found that if there's a slight moving um, like background to my left <laughs> or right when I'm eating, I <laughs> am wildly uncomfortable. I'm not kidding. It felt like the car just could, didn't quite come to a stop. The whole time. And I was like just waiting for someone to hit the fucking I brake I wonder pedal. if it was because you were going backwards. Oh, maybe. Okay, so like how the tower works is that Damn, essentially maybe. there's like a track, like a round track that the tables are on that super slowly rotate yeah. around like the center of the- it Rotates. Yeah, it yeah. like rotates. So, like and the, so, so everybody gets the same view. Right, so everyone gets the same view and you like do at least like one loop around the whole tower. You see the whole city from all the angles, which is great. It's called the 360 yeah. restaurant. And maybe because you were going- Highly original. Maybe because you were going backwards. Cause when I used to ride a train um, as like public transportation, I always made sure that I was sitting forward. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Maybe that's why. You needed those like anti-motion sick goggles. You know, the ones that have like the water on the sides. It's uh, like the goggles here and yeah, the goggles on the side. Yeah, peripherals, did not yeah, like that's it. That's what I'm saying, it's the peripherals. I feel like yeah. that would help balance you out. A, a better steak would have also been good. The steak was 
wasn't bad. I and would say the steak was... didn't suck. And... So I had one scallop. I'm not kidding. It was like a scallop sliced horizontally into five and then laid out flat. And I'm not kidding. It was one scallop. It reminded me of the chef <laughs> had to turn in a 1600 page essay and the night before yeah. he realized he only had like four or 500 words. So he just right. starts hitting that space the button. Space button. If, yeah. if, if it were to be true that I would then, like, I mean, just filler, filler, filler. Yeah. And we got there. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a great view of it right there. Yeah, with that's the, basically us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That one right there is so pretty. And then Lauren spent the next four days yelling at me saying that she just wants me to have a good time and like <laughs> Toronto. And I did like Toronto and then kept telling me that she was upset that I didn't like Toronto despite me kept saying that I did like Toronto. <laughs> And that was like the cycle for four more days. No, except for you forgot one part of the cycle was that you would talk shit about Toronto. I'd say, babe, I just want you to like Toronto. And you're like, I do like Toronto. And that I was the cycle. I, would, I didn't talk shit about it. I just questioned why you couldn't buy alcohol after 8.30 PM in the city. Okay, so the oh. LCB was close at 10. The one we went to was nine. No, Seth, the one that we went to with uh, uh, nine, Thomas and Danny? Nine, guaranteed. Okay. Well, guaranteed. Why are they stopping so early? Oh, oh, Devin, 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 don't talk shit on Toronto. I'm sure there's a great reason for that. Yes, I just that's, spent that's so, that's so that's much time trying to city. plan the trip. Like I spent so much time like serving great, people and trying to like make sure our day was like packed with like amazing. balanced things. It was amazing. The only thing that I would feel confident to talk shit about was the vibe at the university Oh, at which you attended. My God, we went to go visit the Ryerson campus, which is now Toronto Metropolitan University. It's like and a I don't funeral know if we were home. there at like a weird time between midterms and finals. And so Toronto is like obviously a commuter school where such a small percentage of people actually live on campus and everyone like commutes in from like well, suburbs of Toronto. That one is University of Toronto is not a commuter school, right? U of T is also a commuter school, but Got not it. to the same extent as Ryerson is or TMU or whatever. And so we were walking around campus and I'm not kidding. It's like, I wouldn't have been surprised if a fucking like red hooded, like handmaid's tail woman walked down the street, like the vibes. It also was like gray and cold and like kind of windy. So like the, it was making it more dramatic, like with the weather. I had better vibes, conversations and all around good feels in the middle of the pandemic. Oh my God, it was so weird. But we did talk to a couple of very, very nice biomed engineer Literally students. met four different viewers yeah. or slash pod listeners who were bio engineer, biochem. They're something. curing cancer and fixing the railroads Being doctors, all the same time. Yeah, so love that for them. Yeah, um, so that was cool. But the vibe was not great. So weird, but they're just like not students. Like I don't think class was in session maybe. It was though. It was weird. It's very it weird. It was all very weird. I now understand why Lord DIY needed to find something to fucking right, do. Right, why she was depressed. Yeah. Yeah. And I we we saw the building that Lord yeah. DIY was created in. We did. Yep. I showed Jeremy the residence, uh, Pittman, Pittman yep. Hall, where I lived. Where you gave a lot of high quality hand jobs, I'm sure. And Oh um, God, no. First university was gonna be hand jobs, gross. Lauren. I, not I one. don't think I gave a single hand job in Pittman. It's probably not true, probably not false, only because you don't give hand okay, jobs. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> Um, I think what, what we really struggled with is that like Toronto is such like an outdoor city. Cause it's like you walk around in different neighborhoods. Cause like similar to, or similar to New York, there's like different, like, I don't want to use the word boroughs, but there's different like pockets of yeah. neighborhoods. And it's like, you can only go to so many restaurants. You can only drink so many drinks at a specific bar or whatever. Because, because Kentucky Lauren wasn't there. If Kentucky Lauren had been there, she could drink everything. But Kentucky <laughs> Lauren was not there. Like you go and walk around on like certain neighborhoods and stuff. And like the vibes are good and people are out. And there's like so much like outdoor activity. Well, cause like things start in and then they carry out and it's like everything's yeah, but everywhere like, you are is a good place was, to vibe. Whereas Toronto's like, oh, well, that's frozen. So we have to go inside. Yeah, exactly. And there's only like so many malls you can go to. Yep. And like, I didn't want to like go to like a Dave and Buster's type of situation. Like we do that here. So anyways, it was a very stressful, it was a very stressful trip for me. Um, I had a great time. I, Toronto seems nice. That's so nice. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Oh God. I feel like we didn't take a moment to um, talk about our coordination right here. I don't even think I realized you owned like a little purple When I tell you that this thing was like the very, like when I pack for, yeah. for like trips, yeah. the bottom of piles get exposed. And I was like, I haven't put this washed out purple Henley on in quite some time. And here we are, washed out purple. Look at us. Washed out purple. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You and me. 
So I'm having um, daily spirals about um, Vlogmas. So if you're uh, just only a, a pod listener, Vlogmas is essentially where you vlog every single day up until Christmas. So you start recording on December 1st and your day, your recap of uh, your vlog on December 1st goes up on December 2nd. You vlog December 2nd, it goes up December 3rd. And yep. so I have an incredible team of editors over in the UK. So when I upload my footage at 10 p.m. or midnight or whatever it is, they are waking up for the day. They edit while I sleep. I wake up and the vlog is usually ready to go. It is an incredible system. You know, who actually taught me that system was Logan Paul. Shout out Logan Paul. Yeah, he connected me to his editor, uh, Hayden, who connected me to, you know, the rest of his team. And it was, uh, it has changed my life ever since. Well, I don't know if you know this, but it's every day, bro. bro. Oh, babe, that was so nice. Love you. On this. Moving so on. So nice. I actually really feel like, I was just having this conversation with Remy yesterday. So Ingrid Nielsen is like an OG YouTuber. She was Miss Glamorazzi on YouTube. Got it. And she was, I think the originator of Vlogmas of doing this whole series. And I was just saying to Remy that I wish that she got, I mean, maybe not from mine, but like if she had had a percentage of equity of everyone's AdSense who did Vlogmas later on because she started it, that would be fucking crazy for her. This is why we start businesses, not ideas. Not trends. Yeah. Not trends. Because Vlogmas has just caught on like cotton, caught has caught on like wildfire. Yeah, on cotton. Yep. Caught, cotton, cotton is on. definitely not a word, cotton right? Cotton on. Caught on? Cotton, cotton on? Cotton, <laughs> cotton on. It feels depends, like- uh, Depends how far in the South you live. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Got Cause it, got then it, got it's it, done it. caught. Yeah, done caught on. Sure, so no, Vlogmas- done caught. Done caught. Oh, yeah. no on. Done caught him. Done caught. Okay. This is a, okay. Yeah, this is getting a mess. further and further. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's entertained. Everyone's very insulted. Um, and so I can't tell if vlogging every day will make my pod um, contributions better or worse uh, for December. So your, TBD. Yeah. No. Well, let me supply some uh, just general commentary to your. Sure. 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 You're not well in December. <laughs> And the the other day, <laughs> mid plane flight, when you had a little panicky wanicky attack, panicky wanicky attack, yeah, a little panicky wanicky. I, I I realized then we're actually heading into um, <laughs> mental health season mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, uh, Q four. Yeah, it's like a a ramp. It's yep. like you have to like a push the boulder up yep. Yep. until we get to you know Christmas ish day, uh -huh. and that will only be exacerbated by the fact that both of our parents will be in town. Yep. Uh, We've got another dog. We've got a lot yep. of shit going on. Yep. So I think you're going to be my <laughs> darling best friend that I <laughs> will be as concerned for uh -huh. as much as I am uh -huh. uh, called to help at random times with tasks that I have no prior knowledge or any interest or, or real ability to help you with yeah. besides just like being there, uh -huh. which I do have quite a bit of interest in. And I think my job is to do a lot of smiling and nodding for the next 45 days. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. The good news is our Christmas shopping is done though. I, I now know that that's done. Yeah. 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 That's I even bought your present. Check. I'm done. Is really? That, yeah. What'd you give me? What? What'd you give me? I don't know. Did you give me new Rolex? I love how you say new Rolex as if like you already have a Rolex. Uh, you could have got me a, a, a lightly used one. A lightly a used vintage, Rolex. Mm. A Patek. No Rolex is under the tree this year. Mm. Audemars? Don't even know what that word is. That, mm. yeah, like, that was just sounds coming out of your mouth. <sighs> okay. Uh, so my Christmas shopping is done. Vlogmas is coming up. I got my editing schedule, which is great. I've got three different editors cycling through my 24 days of content. Um, but where I am spiraling is my Vlogmas intro. And um, this is literally the dumbest, most like creator specific problem that is so entirely not relevant to such a large percentage of people. Well, can't wait to tell everybody about it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I am just not well right now. I've invested just like so much time and effort and stress and loss of sleep hours to the stupid intro because I thought this year I was like, I'm gonna outsmart the system. Actually, I'm gonna be inspired by Miss Remy Ashton who outsmarted the system two years ago. And Every was day like, I wake up and I go, what would Miss Remy Ashton what do? What would Miss Remy Ashton do? Yeah. What, W, W, M? It's not important. R, D. <laughs> I'm a big R, M, God. W W. It's very difficult. Remy Ashen. R A. But also mm -hmm. Miss M R S. No wait. Whoa. M R A. Whoa. M R A. <sighs> w W M R A D. Got it. It's it's not it's, it's not, not catchy. It's not yeah. it's not good for what merch. What would Remy do? Yeah, not good for merch. Um. So she animated her vlogmas intro, and I was like, oh my god, Last this year is this year? uh the, both. 
but she's working with the same animator that she found last and year. He's already was, done for this year? So, yeah, what of a flex. course. I know what a fucking flex. She's Meanwhile, a great content creator. I'm not sleeping at night because mine is not done and it's November 22nd. Yeah, which is great for our sex life. Keep going. So I, what do you mean? I fall asleep at the normal time when we could be having sex. I'm just up from two to 4 a.m. I've already been in REM. Right, but the issue is you you then carry that stress through the next day. And then for two hours, you know how like there's like a wind down on mm -hmm. your iPhone? Mm -hmm. You start to wind down at like 7.30 now. Cause like, mm -hmm. this is terrible. And then at like 9.30 at 10 o'clock, we fall asleep. I wake up and I've had 74 different notifications from the hours of two to 4.30 AM, <laughs> which gives me enough clarity to understand that you, you weren't exactly sleeping uh. while everybody else was there was not sleeping. Yeah. I hired an animator off of Fiverr, which is incredibly hit or miss, but that's where Remy found her guy. So I was like, fuck, like I can, I can sift through portfolios and find a good person, find someone who's got, um, who's dynamic in different styles and animations mm. and illustrations. And like, when I tell you that the Google PowerPoint presentation that I put together with the assets, inspiration, links to drives of angles of different, like literally because I want to have the dogs in the intro, when I tell you that I uploaded probably six photos of both dogs from different angles. So the animator and illustrator have like an idea of exactly what they look like. Like there is not a single blank space or question that I have not answered in this doc. And we are just hobbling along. Oh my God, it is so painful. And so now I've hired a second animator who's working on, I've given the same creative to a different team and hopefully one of them turns out okay. And I also hired a separate illustrator to use that file as like the main character within both of these intros. It seems as if every time you work with someone creative, yeah. Lee, you have a clear, idea, depiction, thought, visual in your head of what you want it to look like. Uh -huh. And you give some people so many notes because you do have such a clear picture in your head uh -huh. that oftentimes I think that backfires. I just feel like I'm like, well, I should just tell them that I want the cake red because then why would they, like, I don't want them to make cake white and then I have to be like, hey, can you change it to red? You know what I mean? So it's like- Maybe it would have looked better lavender. We just don't know that. Maybe. Yeah. I just think that someone with less talent and less vision mm. might be better off than you because they would allow somebody else to give their best input versus like you having a great idea ahead of time. Wait, you think that I would be better paired with someone who's not as good? No, I think if you were less talented, yeah. there's a better chance that your less direction oh, yeah, might yeah, actually yeah, get, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm not, how often does this happen? I will say that like, I feel like the creatives that I have in my life, I've had in my life for a long time working with me because they just understand, they just get it. Well, like I, I take direction well, I'll give you an example. I know you didn't ask for it. Lauren has this thing in the kitchen where as opposed to just putting the, uh, the cutlery into the washing machine to be washed. The washing machine? She has a very specific <laughs> order in the organizer that knives go in one section, the forks go in one section, the spoons and go in one section. And you know where I do that? Because I'm the only one who unloads it. And so I wanna just grab all the forks and put them away. Put your hand down. That's <laughs> genius. That's what I'm saying. Like why like pick out forks from like 14 different places yep. when they're not in order? And just to be very clear, Jeremy doesn't load the dishwasher or unload the dishwasher. That's okay. You are gonna get yourself in trouble here because if you really <laughs> wanna stick with that, I will, follow through with those actions. No, Jeremy Dunn has done a great job of learning how to keep the forks in one spot in the dishwasher. I, after four years mm -hmm. of the best four years of my life, have learned that Lauren, when she's specific about something, has thought about it 97 times in her head before it comes out of her mouth. Therefore, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I should take it either into consideration and put it into practice or push back immediately mm -hmm. because not following through is not really a, a, a a solution that's gonna work long-term. And I just don't think people realize that with you. <laughs> so anyways, I'm not sleeping because my vlog was intro is not done and I'm not sure if it's gonna be done. So if you see a title card that just has uh, a, a, a black screen, white text that says, oh, well, fuck my life. My vlog was intro is not done. What if it's just like me, you'll know why. me digging moose, just like waving to the camera for like 15 seconds? I mean, fuck, that sounds like the alternative that I'm looking for right now. We're hired. You're hired. We'll send you our rates. Thank you so much. So I, uh, I, I put out a, a little, uh, not a poll. I put out a, some feelers for some holiday horror stories. Cause we are going to Thanksgiving at Matt and Tiff's 
on Thursday. Oh my God, Matt was fucking with me today, but like for an extended period of time. So I texted him today and I was like, hey, like what time do you want us? What can we bring? And he was like, hey, 4 p.m. And um, he's like, I know this is a lot, but like, do you think you could bring turkey? And I was like, like cooked turkey. And he was like, yeah, if possible. And I was like, like, like a full cooked turkey. And he's like, yeah, like I know like it's a lot to ask, but like, do you think it'd be possible? And literally I started glitching. I literally started glitching. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to literally say no. I'm so sorry. I can't come to your Thanksgiving anymore because no, I can't cook a fucking turkey. I could probably stumble through a ham and bring a ham. But also I was like, okay, wait, if you're hosting Thanksgiving, but I'm bringing the turkey, like, is this like, this, this feels, this feels- Like a co-host. This feels like a co-host situation. Co-presented by. And I know that Tiff is handwriting the little place cards that are gonna go and like- Yeah, but the thing is she'll have spent 37 minutes on those little place cards. She didn't have time to make turkey. No, I know. And so I I went into a full blown spiral and it was probably four or five texts into this. Like I came fucking with me. No. We should give some context. Tiff gives these little like custom uh, high touch little place cards. Yeah, they're adorable. Aren't they little cards too? There's little cards too. Yeah, I think there were actually, yeah. There's cards too. So quaint. Yeah, so she didn't have time for a turkey. You did the turkey, she's doing the cards. We almost couldn't go to Thanksgiving because I don't know how to cook a ter- cook, cook ter- turkeys. Turkey. <laughs> uh, I would have said, let's just hop over to Gelson's, pick up a vat yeah. of Turk and head on over. And head on over. Yeah. That, that's, that would have been the no best been thing the that I could have offered. No one would have been the wiser. So anyways, I'm making crack bars and we're bringing alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Crack bars. Crack bars are- um, I don't uh, care. Yeah. Crispy, they're like Rice Krispies on steroids made with fruity pebbles and white chocolate drizzled on them. And we, we sprinkle crack in them. And they are crack. Delicious. They're so crack. no turkey responsibility anymore. No, thank God. I love that Matt just They were with fucking you. with me for so long. But the fact oh. that he like, didn't even like, like bring me in on it, he's just fucking with you alone. Yeah. Makes me so happy. It was a group chat. It was, I was in a moth group chat. That makes me happy. I know, it was so stressful. By the way, there's no better compliment than when a guy just fucks with you. I mean, that's mm. basically the my relationship with all of my friends from age mm-hmm. five until today. Mm. In fact, we don't ever stop being friends. We just stop playing, well, we temporarily halt pranks uh-huh. on each other mm. until yeah. we see each other again. Got it. Yeah. So uh, I pulled some, I, ca- I cast a net. I cast a net for some holiday horror stories. Mm-hmm. And also Devin did a deep dive through Reddit to find some of the um, most entertaining holiday horror stories. So I just I just feel like we need to be put into the uh, the holiday season, the holiday spirit. Okay. Um, by, by scaring the shit out of each other? Like what could happen? No, honestly, I based on the stories that I've read, I would just, I think I, what I really learned is that everyone needs to know how to do the Heimlich remover. Okay. <laughs> Maneuver, maneuver. Oh my God, flashback to literally episode, first 10 episodes, Heimlich, Heimlich remover. remover. It's fine. Yeah. The Heimlich maneuver. Um, because the amount of stories that I got of people choking on things, everything from a toothpick to a piece of steak to a chicken wing to a mushroom cap. I did learn via a TikTok of the day, the doggy Heimlich remover. Yeah, no, I know. I, yeah. I've also I've also learned that one so too. So like that one I got, because Diggy could for sure find himself in that situation. I without think Moose question. too. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Moose would immediately eat whatever we got out of his throat again without 100%. chewing yep. and put him right back. And then we'd position. go Heimlich maneuver Touch round two. two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, okay. So we're gonna hope to God no one chokes. L- literally, like I just feel like I need to be, make a PSA right now. With asphyxiation like a theme here. Uh, you would not believe how many stories. I'd say at least 10% of them had choking involved at some point. Okay. It was None crazy. of mine do. None of yours do? Thankfully. Yeah. Thankfully. I choked on a green bean once when I was a kid and my mom had to do the Heimlich remover and I just like rocketed the bean out of my mouth. I've not had much issues staying alive while eating in my life. Yeah, well, I really struggled at one point. Um, okay, so I, I want to give you my first one. Okay, this is this is my favorite. This was the the highlight. This is the winner, uh, the ten out of ten story. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I wish there was a restart button for my brain. I mean, what could be better than being able to press that when anxiety has my brain firing? Well, we know that's not how it works, but something that can be useful is BetterHelp. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. We we are new parents. We are. We are new parents. Yes. To a seven-year-old meatball. With a average control of his bladder. (laughs) 
BetterHelp has been such a huge, um, well, help for me during my journey with anxiety. I call it a journey because some days it feels like it will never end, but having better help on my side makes me feel a little more hopeful. It's like the closest thing to a real life easy button. That is so true. Yeah. Therapy really can make something that seems to be taking over your life a little more manageable. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it is affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash WT9. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash WT9. When I was seven, I had woken up my cousins at like 6 a.m. to go see what Santa had brought us. Right. So we grabbed a flashlight to not wake the parents up and headed to the living room. We found some blood on the carpet and ended up following a trail of blood only to find my cousin's hamster dead underneath the tree. I guess his hamster had gotten out on Christmas Eve and their dog had found him. There's something about following a trail of blood with a small flashlight that really just gets burned into your seven-year-old mind. Now it's a good story to laugh at every few years after a couple of drinks. RIP Christmas Grizz forever in our hearts. Christmas Chris. Christmas Chris. Wow. I would be harp. If I, if Marshmallow, God, so my hamster Marshmallow came to a death on Christmas, <laughs> I would be fucking devastated. I would be so wildly annoyed that they decided to do, use that day to die because then I would not be able to do anything besides listen to Lauren talk about Marshmallow. Oh my God. For the yeah. entire holiday season. Marshmallow is buried in um, my Nana and Papa's backyard when and they don't own that house anymore. So Marshmallow lives beneath someone's house. I was say, Mar people don't realize that the, the, the body of Marshmallow is below their Those petunias. are the luckiest people in St. Catharines. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, Devin, hit us with your favorite. Okay, I have a few favorites. My top three favorite. My mom left a turkey out to defrost the night before Thanksgiving dinner slash family reunion. Come sun up, it was covered in ants. She just <gasps> washed it off and cooked it anyway and served it to our in-laws. No! Honestly, honestly mom, mom understands the, the most important rule here, which is just go with it. Just go with just it? Just go with it. I had another one where um, the, the family at some point had dumped the whole casserole of mashed potatoes off of the ground. And so when they, they just, everyone just scooped it up and put it back in and everyone had a little bit of floor mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. you, you experienced this? No, 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 no. This is one of the stories. Got it. Floor, floor taters. Floor taters. Uh, yeah. Honestly, depending on how close it was to cleaning day, Actually, you know what? If I dumped a whole casserole of mashed potatoes on the ground, We're I going think- going to McDonald's drive through I think that you could just take the top layers and put it back in the casserole you could, and no, you just clean off the floor layer. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, the floor layer's gotta go. Floor layer, I mean, honestly, we get it. We have house cleaning days on Thursdays. I think that if it was Thursday, even Friday morning- Have you ever seen our dogs rub their buttholes all over the ground? They don't really do it in the kitchen. Well, not that we see. Point is, I, I agree <laughs> that the bottom layer, you got to sacrifice. But the top layer. Top layer. I want some floor mashed potatoes. That's only floor adjacent taters. Floor adjacent? Floor adjacent taters. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I'm, on, I'm on board with this. What else? Oh my God, yes. Yeah, stuffed mushroom. Uh, he was dead for two minutes before EMS got there and saved him, but he's 92 now and lives happily ever after. Stuffed mushroom? Stuffed mushroom. I love stuffed mushrooms. Like, did did oh, he uh, choke? Yes. On a stuffed oh. mushroom? Yes. <laughs> I told you. the. Jeremy, I gotta ruin it like that. Um, this is another personal favorite. This isn't a horror story, but when I was 10, my cousin only bought me toe socks for Christmas, dot, dot, dot. But I have webbed feet, so. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that was, that, that's gotta be on purpose, that right? That is so fucking funny. At 10, depending on how old the cousin is, it might just be, because remember toe socks were so popular. You know, they didn't, Hit my you know what? I don't, maybe the- He didn't hit my the, friend group. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all my friends had toe socks at one point. No, Lauren, no one's, no one's debating that. <laughs> I need to know if the toe sock representation um, is, is part of our audience. So please let me know so I feel a little bit less alone in this moment. How did you keep the men off of you? Oh God, I know, it's exhausting. <laughs> There's nothing like a toe sock to bring all the boys to the yard. I mean, like the lint <laughs> that one can get between your toes without- the toe sock. Yeah. Throw a little extra fabric in there. Throw a little web in there. Yeah. Now you got a spoon. Okay. <laughs> Next topic. Okay, Devin. 
Well, my wife and I are celebrating our first Christmas together. Last year I was overseas and couldn't be home. So this year we went to her mother's to spend the night. Her mom asked to speak with me in private and took me to the kitchen. She handed me an envelope and told me that her daughter's old room was not soundproof and we needed to keep it down. In the envelope, condoms. But to add insult to injury, they're extra small. No. Oh. The, First off, the do condoms come in extra small? I think so. Probably, right? If you can get XL ones, there's got to be XS ones. They, yeah, they got to please the micro P community. Yeah, what would a micro P wear? Yeah, but like, I, when you go to the gas station yeah. and you see the Trojan Durex, you know. But they also don't have like the lambskin ones there at the gas stations. Maybe they hide the extra small under the counter. Mm, with the cigarettes. So you have to like, not only- Oh my God, to get, be like, hey, can I get that extra small? See, if, if that were the case, I would be every time like, okay, I got some camel crushes. And some- And, and then um, <laughs> uh, my buddy yeah. is gonna go- yeah. Uh, he's my, my friend, he's not here, but um, what, what array of, of other sizes do you have? I just appreciate that <laughs> she didn't say don't do it. She just gave them tools to be safer in her home to smash. Yeah, I agree. I also don't appreciate that she did it. I, I, maybe it's like my mom and I have this weird relationship, which is if I walked by the bedroom and like, if I said, good night, mom. And I closed my door. Mm -hmm. And then I had, for whatever reason, needed to go outside of my bedroom at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and needed to just go downstairs and grab a glass of water, we'll say. If I looked, opened my door, looked across the side, and I saw John Stamos and, I, I don't know, Kit Harrington going to town on my mom. Wow, both. Those things didn't happen. Right. They don't exist to yeah. me. No, they no. never did no, happen. No, no, That's, you in don't fact, just address it. In fact, if Kit or John Stamos said, what's up? They gave me the nod. That's the only time I'm just walking. I'm yeah. moving on. No, no, that's not, that doesn't need to, you don't need to circle back on that with Donna. It never happened. Yeah. It never happened. No. And she's given me the same courtesy when mm -hmm. I do stupid things. You're like, I didn't, nope, not aware of that. Am I, is that, is that a crazy, is that a me thing? No, 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 no. no. I think um, some parents though, who are just like, who are like no sex until you're married type of thing, maybe try and like insert them. Okay, well not <laughs> quite the. Lauren. Could have chosen a better word there. Um, <laughs> they get in the try middle of to, Try to Linda hands. obstruct Ooh. the whole situation. Got it. You know what I mean? Okay, I got another one. Great, similar friction. similar uh, vein to this one. My ex-boyfriend came over to my house uninvited and handed my mom a gift that he wanted to give me before we broke up. So obviously I had to open it in front of the family and note there were young children and other family members who were very curious as to what he gave. Mm, very good. I opened the box, very luxurious packaging, and then I cringed when I realized it was a sex toy. I went red like a tomato and everyone was asking what it was. I ran to the living room, went to my bedroom and called him screaming as to why he thought this was a good idea to give me when we had broke broken up and handed it to my mom of all people. Let's, un let's unpack this. Okay. You're put in the same situation. And let's not, let's take the ex-boyfriend out of it. Let's just say that you're, you mistakenly think that you should be opening a package mm -hmm. in front of the whole fam. Right. And it ends up being a sex toy. What do you do? I think my dad would just quite literally die. But yeah, no, no, Greg would. Greg that, would just, be just literally die. It'd be for him, yeah. And so I think that it would be similar to, I think it would just be uh, like, accept, acknowledge silently and move on. Oh, you would you would acknowledge it to the room? No, 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 I think, I think open it and just be like- Hey, hold on, I'm okay. Greg. Okay. Oh, what'd you get? I don't even know what to do right now. I'm I'm glitching. I'm glitching. <laughs> I'm literally glitching. Yeah, I don't like even know. My hands are sweating. It's smooth. The kids like throw a wrench in I the think, whole thing. I think literally it would be. I'd have to play it off and just be like, "Oh my god, Dad, don't look," and then run. Yeah. Could you good. say like, "Oh, it's it's, it's something inappropriate." Yeah, like, I think it'd be we'll like, just, oh my God, not appropriate. Dad, close your eyes and then run. I have another um, potato themed uh, horror story. So not that great, but I have a weird uncle who always sticks his fingers in the mashed potatoes at family holiday parties. So mm, all of the cousins an uncle. band together to make sure we get to the food before our uncle gets there with his grimy little disgusting hands. Side note, he's the uncle that wears tie dye graphic tees with American flags and eagles on them. If that helps paint the picture. <laughs> Randy. Um, <laughs> Literally his name is for sure Randy. Yeah, it's hundred percent Randy. I like, I think that families all need one odd duck mm. just to like teach kids early on that adults don't have it all together. Yeah, that's true. But that odd duck, man, gets weird. 
It's usually the uncle too. Always the uncle. No, it's always the uncle mm-hmm. or the aunt, but always the uncle. I don't know if I have a, that weird of a duck in my family. <sighs> my uncle found a squirrel in his yard, befriended it, and then let it into him, his house and let it live in his is house. Your, so Zane and Keith. Is your uncle Remy? No, but way more extreme. Because <laughs> he like, would watch TV with him. <gasps> That's adorable. Yeah. I would 100% do that. Um, no, Remy had a, Remy had a, a, a possum. Yeah. Tinky. No, you Tinky. can't. Tinky. Yeah, no. You're, but she would let into the house? She rescued it. She brought it. it into the house on purpose. Yeah, I know. Ridiculous. Uh, have any of you, I follow many possum counts and they are adorable. Aren't they like, they can like really attack you. I mean. Like rabies? Is that a thing? I follow an, uh, an opossum named Mushroom and he's adorable. Why are we pronouncing the silent O in possum? <laughs> <laughs> an opossum. Well, I follow this pterodactyl account <laughs> and it. Um, okay, got it. Oh, bring, bring this one on. This oh, one's a little no. crazy. Mm. December, 2004, a mm. naked man Great broke year. into my house <gasps> and the officer responding had a canine officer with him. The dog bit the guy's <gasps> testicle off and lacerated his penis. There was blood everywhere. It was on the news. The man won a million dollar settlement with the city afterwards. Christmas was kind of gross. That's fucking insane. I don't know. That happened in Florida 100%. Oh yeah. I know that that was in Florida. I know in my heart and soul. I've never been faced with <laughs> the uh, tragedy and at the same time opportunity uh-huh. to have to value my now no. either completely Ruptured. removed penis or in potentially a uh, kind of partial Testicle. member. Yeah. But I gotta be honest, if I were put in a position where I had to, mm-hmm. I'm going for a lot more than a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. How do you move on with your life? Well, I, but is, I, isn't that what a eunuch is? How does one how does one value what their penis is worth versus other penises? Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Do you have to like yeah, in, you're val- in court like mm-hmm. show this was the member? <laughs> <laughs> like you're going through old like finding nudes, be like this thing was way worth way more. A sex worker makes like a ton more. Totally, because it's their job. It's to be insured. Fair. I gotta be honest. If I'm suing for the value of my penis and a sex worker is next to me, I think they deserve more. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But some might say it would be difficult to do any job Mm -hmm. if the joke that everyone's going to follow you around with is like, well. mm -hmm. That feels like one of those things similar to like the jugular where it's like, if it got slashed, you could just bleed out and die. The dong? The dong. Yeah, I bet so. That feels like one of those spots that would just like start splurting blood. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about anything else. Sure. Okay. So I got, I got a poop one for you. Why? Um, I had a poop one too. Oh, you got a poop one too? Okay. Well, we can just finale out on poop. Great. Uh, okay, my poop went first. I was in high school and was seeing this guy. He invited me over for an early Christmas dinner with his mom and brother. Dinner was delicious, but didn't end up agreeing with me. I took the biggest shit of my entire life. Mm, Christmas animal. And then, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and then luck decided to fuck me over by having the toilet suddenly stop working. I had no idea what to do, but I was definitely not inviting my crush or his family in to help me. So God forgive me. I plucked it no, out of the toilet no. with toilet paper, wrapped it up real good and buried it at the bottom of the trash can. Needless to say, I was hella awkward the rest of the night and never went out with him again. End story. Love you in the pod. Hope your Christmas isn't as shitty. <laughs> That was good. Two points for the ending. She stuck the landing. I actually think that there's a special place in hell Uh for people who do not- Have a plunger in their bathroom? In their guest bathroom. (gasps) Guest bathroom. There's, why? Why? Why would you you make that a a potential conversation? Now it's one thing if like, oh, our plumbing cannot take plungers. So like, if you do that, we have to like- I thought you were gonna say our plumbing can't handle fat shits. I mean, <laughs> you ever been in like New York? Sometimes it should just like- Yeah, yeah. Or if you're like up North in like a remote area, normally when you got like a sump pump situation, right. you gotta be taking smaller shits. The point is, I, I, I'm i not kidding. The amount of times where I've like that thought has gone through my head, I go, this, how could you be that person? <laughs> right? Like, I think that should be like a- Do we have a pump plunger in our guest bathroom? Abs- we have a plunger in every single bathroom. Do we really? We have a plunger wow. and, and wow. one of those like cleaner sticks. The little it's scrubby really, things. It's yeah. very easy mm-hmm. for people to, mm-hmm. cause my thing is this, if if you want to take, well, if, if for whatever reason, you take the biggest dump of your life in my guest bathroom, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. It's, I understand it's gonna be a lot more embarrassing for you than I, yeah. I, we don't care. We don't care. Totally, we're pretty Everybody poops. Poops. We're gonna laugh Everybody about poops. it. We're going to laugh about it later, yeah. but like we're all good. But I'm gonna allow you to clean that scenario up without involving me. Mm-hmm. And then if for whatever reason, so help me God, you still need to ask me to help. Got it. Like we can fix it out, but these things are very fixable. Poop politics Everyone with Jeremy. go buy a plunger. 
for your guest bedroom right now. I agree. I agree. Devin, what, what did you have to say? Take us out on some poop. I'm actually going to not do the poop when I had because it, in long story short, it was a grandma. Yours was a lot better. Great. <laughs> Mine was just a grandmother. A grandma <laughs> she was with her family. She just accidentally let it loose <gasps> and dirtied her drawers. And they didn't have drawers to give her. So they put a towel around her and she proceeded to sit on the couch for the rest of the Christmas with a towel around her and plastic sheets under her. And these kids had to just like sit next Listen, to their grandmother and pretend nothing happened. I just feel as if someone drive that poor grandmother home. Yeah, please. That's, I, that's just, uh, and by the way, everyone now add a pair of granny drawers to a, to a plunger yeah, in yeah, your right. bathroom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that you have, you your know, granny house. drawers. You prepare for anything. Yeah, yeah. Essential. What were you saying, Devin? The story that I do have is even better. Okay. There was this quiet old janitor that worked at our office building who was scheduled to retire on Christmas. So our Christmas party kind of included his farewell. We gave gifts to each other, put up a Christmas tree. People brought cakes and pastries, Christmas stuff. Then here comes the old janitor and he leaves a fairly big bag of presents under the tree. We're all kind of surprised because no one seemed to interact with him that much. But nonetheless, we thank him and wish him the best and stuff. Then he leaves and presumably sets off to the Midwest. The next day we open the presents, including his. Turns out the retiring janitor gave everyone in the office a little bottle of sulfuric <gasps> acid. Everybody got one, even me. I still have it to this day. We don't know where he got them or how much they cost, but apparently he hated our, get our guts. Our new janitor has no idea why everyone is treating him so nicely. Oh my God. Let's unpack this. <laughs> That's like twisted. Yeah, we're speechless. I, <laughs> I have so many questions. I just feel like I also don't know about that much about sulfuric. So it feels like some anthrax acid. sort of thing. Okay. Like you I just mean, don't want to touch. I just don't think you would want to. Okay, so known and uh, is the, oh God, as oil of vitriol? A vitriol? Vitriol? V-I-T-R-A-L? V-I-T-R-I-O-L? Mm. Vitriol. It is colorless, odorless, and a viscous liquid that is, oh my God, I don't even know half of these words, miscible with water. Oh, so like you could confuse it. It's used to produce other chemicals, explosives, and glue to retain petroleum to cure metal and in lead-based car batteries. Is, okay, and how far down on the list of possibilities is Christmas gift? Um, let's see, benefits. Uh, one of the most widely used chemicals. Mm. Um, mine things like copper and lithium. Multi-purpose. Um, for EV production, EV infrastructure, EV batteries. But like he could have given them little teddy bears. <laughs> oh, highly corrosive chemical that is potentially explosive in concentrated form. It can cause severe skin burns, can irritate the nose and throat and cause difficulties breathing if inhaled, can burn the eyes, possibly cause blindness and can burn holes in the stomach if swallowed. I think we all- Merry Christmas. At the end of the day, the same thing that's happened to our, uh, well, the last shitty situation, probably just happened to this guy one too many times and he wanted to get him back for it. That's a, Makes sense. That's a romance novel, novel waiting to happen. Well, on that low note, Latvia, it was wonderful hanging out with you this week. <laughs> we'll be back next week with more exciting information. Well, Vlogmas have started. Vlogmas will have started. We're going to be in a Christmas spirit. One more podcast before mm. shit hits the fan for me. Oh yeah, Lauren's going to be um, at peak fucking Cuckoo. basket place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. I predict at least one episode crying. Yeah, and- um, uh, On that note. On that note, Tilly's, we will see you next week. It's been a time. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Love you. Bye. Bye. One, two, nine. Are you ready? Yep, let's go home.